Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week, the question that came in is based upon a video that I did a couple of Ask Anissa episodes ago about communicating with the adjuster and is the adjuster our um, client, if you will, in kind, should we be communicating with them? And it definitely got a lot of response. And I know that there's a lot of conflicted feelings and emotions out there on this topic. So I do want to read to you the email that I got. Actually, this was not an email. This was a comment on the YouTube channel under that video. And I'll post a link. If you're on the YouTube channel now watching this, I'll post a link below the video in the description. So you can go back and watch that video. But this was a comment on the YouTube channel. And I really, really felt it was very important to address this for everybody. So I wanted to go ahead and read it here to you and do the Ask Anita on it this week. So this comment was made by Alex. Thank you so much, Alex, for being subscribed to the channel and for your comment on the video. So Alex said, some companies are fed jobs by the insurance adjusters. Most are not. If you have a company that is fed jobs, I 100% agree, make the adjuster happy and keep up the relationship. If you are not in this small group, then I am not sure that this is the best advice. So a couple things here, Alex, to begin with, I want to make sure that there was no miscommunication on that last video. I am definitely not saying to be on a TPA or to be on program work, okay? I would not be on a TPA with my restoration company and I would not be part of program work because I don't agree with what you have to do to be on those programs and, you know, taking money off of your bills and things like that. So I just want to clarify that because it kind of sounded like maybe that was the impression that you got from me. So I apologize if that was the case. The other thing that I wanted to, to uh, bring out here and talk about was it said, you know, that some insurance company or some companies are fed jobs by the adjusters that most are not. Um, and, and I really respectfully disagree with that, Alex. I know a lot, a lot of restoration companies and the ones that are usually massively successful and large and maybe even more than one location, they actually are fed jobs by the insurance companies. So I don't feel that it's a small group, if you will, Alex, that is actually getting work or fed jobs, as you said, from the insurance adjuster and or agent. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I feel like it is a great symbiotic relationship where it's a win-win if we can create that with an adjuster. I'm not saying make and adjust are happy by not doing your job correctly or not handling a claim the way it needs to be handled. I just feel like we can work together. I feel like the insurance adjuster, the insurance agent, as well as the restoration cleaning contractor can all come together and serve our like-kind client, which is the insured, and make sure that they get taken care of very, very well. And if you create a solution for the adjuster, or the insurance company, you are going to get more work from them. They will send jobs to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you've sold out or that you're, you know, not doing things the way they need to be done. You're doing them the way the insurance company wants to do them, because I would never tell you to do that. But if you can onboard your adjuster and build a working relationship with them, where these adjusters are working with them over and over and over again, they know that you're gonna do a quality job. They know that you are an honest restoration contractor and that they don't have to worry that you're not padding your bills and that you're taking care of business and that their clients are super happy when the job's done and they just are not getting a bunch of complaints, they're gonna send you work. And what's wrong with that? Being a referral-based business where you're getting jobs, not only from the insurance, the adjuster, the insurance agent, other, clients that you have helped, so the insured is sending their friends and family to you, but even contractors that work on your jobs, whether it's HVAC or a carpet cleaner or, you know, a, a specialty textile company. This is how we really build an amazing restoration company where we have jobs coming in the door faster than we can know what to do with them, and we don't ever have to worry about the phone ringing because it's always going to be ringing. We're always going to have job security because we've created so much 
network and relationship in our community, which does include the insurance adjuster, I strongly feel, that we're, we're going to have security in knowing that the jobs in our marketplace are going to come to us, not our competitors. So Alex, I, I hope that maybe you feel a little differently now after this video, and I've kind of expanded on that a little bit, but I just really wanted to make sure that you understood I was not proponing to go join TPAs and be on insurance companies back and call. There's a difference. I want to make sure that what you're doing and what I'm trying to promote is creating good relationships between the restoration contractor and the insurance adjuster, as well as insurance agent, because that's how I feel we can all come together and better serve our client, the insured, and help these people out when they get, find themselves in a terrible situation, like having had a fire in their home. And I just think that's a better way to do business. I don't want to get up and do business every day, right? Have to go battle and fight and you know think that I'm at war with the insurance company, who I'm going to say it again, is the people that is paying our invoice. They, at the end of the day, are the ones writing the check that's paying our bills, okay, when we send them in. I, yes, I know that the insured is responsible and that's who our contracts with. But if you deny that the insurance company is the one paying our bill, then I, I'm afraid that you're really just not accepting the reality of the circumstance that we're in. And so why would it not serve us very, very well and our clients very well if we have a good rapport and relationship created with these adjusters and hopefully we will work with them over and over and over again. So Alex, I, I hope maybe that um, definitely cleared some things up. Hopefully maybe I changed your mind a little bit. Um, I'd love to hear any feedback that you have for me. Please don't hesitate to email me anisa at firehouseeducation.com or comment again below the video if you're here on the YouTube channel watching it or if you're here on rnmagonline.com and you're watching this on the newsletter, please comment below the video. There's a space there for it too. All right, well, I wanna thank you very much, Alex, for again, being a part of Ask Anissa and watching the YouTube channel. And I would really love to hear any stories that any of you have out there about successes that you've had in creating relationships and reports with working with adjusters and how that has maybe affected your business and affected your ability to be able to serve your community in a much bigger way. All right, well on that note, I'm gonna wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for spending time with me. Shoot me an email with your questions, anisa at farhouseeducation.com. And I just might feature you on next week's Ask Anisa video call. Thank you.